Welcome to a new video. In this video, we're going to be learning how to make a six piece dress, this style in particular. So let's get started. Welcome to the Learn to Sew Academy channel. Please remember to subscribe. Thank you. I'm going to be using these two fabrics. The lace fabric is going to be the upper bodies and the Ankara print fabric is going to be the lower skirt. The measurements you're going to be needing are as follows. You're going to need a shoulder, bust, your half length. That will be from your shoulder, the highest point of your shoulder to wherever you want your skirt to start from. You're going to need your waist around that area, the waist measurement, the circumference around that area where you're stopping your half length. You're going to need to know the hip measurement. You're also going to need to know the full length of your dress. So we're going to make the upper part of this dress first. So I'm going to fold this first into two and then I'll fold again so that I'll have four layers of fabric. I've folded into two so I'm checking now to make sure that if I divide my bust measurement by two that what I have here is enough including seam allowance and zipper allowances so once you have the timing that you have enough then you want to fold again one more time but this time around as you fold you want to leave some space here for your zipper this will be the front, this right here. And this way you're going to have an opening is going to be where the zipper goes. For the upper bodies, the fullest part is the bust measurement. That's why I'm using the bust measurement to gauge if I have enough folded over here. The bust we are using here in this project is 42 inches. And if I divide that by 4, we're going to have 10.5. So I'm dividing by 4 because 1 when you took your measurement you went around the body to take that measurement of the circumference around the bust area in cutting now we are folding first into two and then we fold again so if you come from the side you're going to have four layers of fabric so that is why we need to divide this by four so i need 10.5 and i need my allowances next i'm going to now cut out what i need for the upper part of the dress and i'm going to be using the measurement of the half length for the upper part of the dress the measurement we're using here is 16 inches and i'm going to be adding seam allowances to that because we're going to be joining this at the top and we're also going to join it at the bottom to the other part of the dress so you can either do anything from half an inch to one full inch so I'm just going to do 0.75 for that. So 0.75 on both sides is going to give me one and a half. So I'm going to add that to my half length, which is 16. 16 plus one and a half will give me 17 and a half. I'll cut this now. Now we start to do the measurements. And we're going to start by first measuring the shoulder. So your measurement will start from right where you have the complete fold and some opening like this. So this is the back and this is the front. So we're going to start to measure from the front because this back by the time we put the zipper is also going to be folded in like that. So I'm going to look for my shoulder measurement and I'm using 16 here. So plus half an inch we're gonna say eight and a half then i'm gonna come down here by nine inches plus i know i had 7, uh, 0.75 at the top here so i'm just gonna add that so this right here is where i'm going to now measure for the bust and the bust is 42 if you divide 42 by 4 we have 10.5 and i'm going to add one inch for my seam allowance on the side so i have 11.5 and at the bottom here i'm going to use a waist measurement of 39 inches and we're going to divide that by four so the 39 divided by four we give 9.75 and then i'm going to be having a dot and i'm also going to be having 
a side seam so all together i'm going to add an additional two inches one inch is going for to be for the dart and my other one inch is going to be for my side seam so what i'm going to be doing now is i'm going to do my arm hole and i'm going to be joining that from my shoulder down to where i have the bust measurement and you want to join the bust line mark to that of the waist so for the neckline i'm going to do five and a half and i'm going to do four and a half for my depth i'm going to make the front and the back the same and we just want to connect it all the way to the top here and we just cut so i'm going to measure where the dart will be and i need 4.5 so that when we sew it will end up at four inches because we're going to do half on both sides and that'll give us four inches so i'm just going to put a tiny little notch right there so that we know where we have that and I'm going to put a shoulder slant right here. I'm going to slope it right here. And that can be anything between half to one inch. Next, we'll work on the lower part of this dress. And it's just very similar, just almost exactly like what I did when I made the six-piece skirt. The only difference is that we're going to be shaping the waist. I've explained what the six-piece is in my six piece skirt video i'm gonna link that in the description if you can check that out it will really really help you to understand this concept and what we are doing and how everything tied together even much better but i'm just gonna explain it again what we're doing when we say six piece is that we're cutting our fabric into three pieces at the front and then three pieces at the back so those three pieces together will form the six pieces however at the back you're also going to have to cut that back portion into two because you're going to need a zipper allowance at the back so at the back we're going to be cutting this into two so that will make your back to look like a four piece but it is actually a three piece because you're going to be joining those two parts together again so you're going to join those two parts together and you're just going to open it up where you're going to be putting your zipper so either you're doing a skirt or you're doing a dress like what we're doing here you'll still need to join back those individual two pieces at the back to form a hole so one two three will give you three pieces at the back then one two three will give you three pieces at the front only that at the front you will not have a joining so what you're going to be doing when it comes to how you measure this on your fabric is that you're going to take your waist measurement and you're going to divide your waist by 12. now the reason you're dividing this by 12 is that each time you're going to be cutting this you cut on the fold and once you're cutting on the fold it's like you are doubling what you have here so you have six pieces and because we're going to fold it to cut so technically we are going to be having 12 layers so because you're going to be folding this into two each individual panel we're going to have six panels like i explained but because you're going to be folding each panel to cut you're going to be having two layers for each panel and since we have six all together that is going to give us 12. so we want to make sure that we divide our waist and also the e we want to divide those measurements by 12 whatever you have then whatever we get when we do this division we are going to now add our seam allowances we're going to factor in the seam allowance for joining the panels together you're going to need to join panel one to this panel two and then you're going to need to join panel two to panel three so what we're going to do is we're going to need to join this part to this part you are going to join this part to this part so taking the middle panel for example 
let's remove this joining so that it's not confusing so let's assume this is just the front this is one two and three now taking the front alone for example you're going to see that you're going to need a seam allowance on this side all the way from the top to the bottom you're going to need seam allowance you're also going to need seam allowance on the other side from the top to the bottom so whatever your seam allowance is you want to factor it into what you get when you do your division for the waist and for the hip so if you're going to have one inch seam allowance on both sides whatever you get when you divide by 12 add one inch to it now you only need to add it on one side because remember again you're going to be folding we are going to fold when we cut each panel so whatever i do on one side is going to automatically apply to the other side so if you're adding one inch just add that one inch on that side so that one inch will reflect on this side and it will also reflect on this side when you cut it then when we cut the back that will have the zipper we're going to factor in our zipper so we're going to cut that separate and i'm going to show you as we progress another thing i would like to point out is that for each panel you'll see that it's going to curve in a little like that and then it's pressed out so one easy way to do this is to determine what how wide you want this to be if you know how wide you want this to be for each panel then you factor that in this will be the widest part of each panel so when you fold you want to make sure that if for instance you're using 16 inches you want to make sure that 16 divided by 2 because you're folding this by 2 so 16 divided by 2 will give you 8 inches and then you will add your seam allowance so that is one easy way for you to determine what you want your panel to be at the bottom also when you start to cut from up here all the way down here you can see that it comes in at first like a pencil skirt and then it's pressed out like that so what you want to do is you want to know from up here the waist area or wherever in this case that we're doing a dress wherever we're going to be joining the dress from from that area all the way down to around above your knee you want to know what the measurement is for that and you want this above your knee where it cuffs so that it will be easy for you to move your legs when you're walking the first thing i want to confirm is that i have enough length i'm doing a full length of 58 inches and we already took out 16 inches for the half length so you're going to say 58 minus 16 so we're looking at 42 inches for what we need here and we're going to factor in our seam allowance at the top to add it to um, the bodies and also at the bottom so you just want to make sure you have enough before you start cutting and then once that is confirmed you now want to fold this into two i'm going to cut each panel individually to avoid confusion as you keep doing this and as you get more familiar you can cut two panels together you can cut three panels at a time but i'm going to do one panel first so you see and understand what we're doing so i folded this into two when i fold i want to consider the biggest part of this skirt the biggest part is that bottom part i'm going to be using 16 inches in total and i'm going to now add my seam allowance because i have folded this panel into two i divide the 16 into two i have eight inches plus my one inch seam allowance that brings me to nine inches on the fold so i want to make sure i have nine inches and right here at the bottom i have more than enough so i'm sure that my bottom now satisfy my requirement so i'm going to now measure the length that i need first so for my length i need 42 like we determined and then i'm gonna have one inch at the bottom so that will be 43 inches then i'm going to do a three quarter of an inch at the top so that's going to give me 43.75 for my total length so what i want to do here is just to measure that 
so now we're going to start measuring from where we have a complete fold and what we want to first start to use is the hip the hip is the biggest measurement between the waist and the hip so we're going to go by the hip from from the waist to above the knee we're going to use the measurement of the hip and later we're going to be shaping it for the waist so just follow along so what we have for the hip is we have 44 inches for the total hip we're dividing that by 12 that gives us 3.67 and we're going to add one inch to that and that is going to give us 4.67 so what we want to do is from the waist down to above the knee whatever we are de determined that to be we're going to be doing 4.67 generally if you're doing a skirt you're above the knee the standard usually is around that 19 inches but it's going to vary based on people's height so you may want to check who you're making this for to, to check the right length for them so in this project i'm going to use 20 inches and i must also remember to add my allowance since i'm going to have a seam allowance at the top so whatever your seam allowance is you want to add that to this so this is my above the knee point right here so I'm going to start measuring for the hip now from this waistline to this line here that is above the knee measurement. So here I'm doing 4.67 and I'm just going to approximate it to the closest number on the tape measure. This is pretty easy once you get the concept. So now I'm joining those lines. I'm just connecting those dots right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is from this line, I'm now going to slant it all the way to the length that I need at my bottom. So I've explained how to get this length at the bottom. But another thing you can also do is you can also decide how wide you want the total to be at the bottom. You may say, okay, I want the total width at the bottom to be 54 inches, for example. So in that case, you will now say, 54 inches divided by 12 for your full length at the bottom so that when you fold this that is what you're going to be using to consider the bottom part to see if you have enough folded and again if you use a total like if you say you need um 54 inches for all of the bottom for example you can say oh if you divide that into six since you're doing six pieces how much do you have for each one when you divide the 54 into 6 then for each panel you will know how much you need for each panel and then based on that you will do your fold and you will measure what you need so that is just another way to determine how wide you want it at the bottom so over here I'm going to be using a total of 9 inches after considering our seam allowance and now I'll just connect I'll go from that above the knee area that I want right here and I'll connect it all the way to the bottom. You slant your ruler and you draw a line slanted all the way from that point to the tip of the fold that you have at the bottom. I'll go ahead and cut the first panel. Now we have one piece from our six pieces. So I'm going to do the back piece first so that you see how that is done because that is going to be different from the other ones. So once we cut the back piece, which is going to have the zipper allowance, I will now make four more of exactly what I have here. Oh, and by the way, I need to cut this out because this will make it longer than the length that I need. So what you're going to do is you fold again the same way you folded but this time i've left a zipper allowance and i'm using 1.5 allowance again so it corresponds with what i used on the bodies the first panel i made is on top of this this is going to be my back because it has a zipper allowance so what we're going to do is just to cut this out so now i'm going to cut the back panel into two so I'm just leaving something to show me the middle point. 
so now that we have done that i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to make four more of this now that i've cut all the sides i'm going to remove the center so now i have um four panels so i'm going to now be shaping the sides so this is what we have this right here will be one side and this will be the second side and then we'll have the center panel so we have a center panel we have a left side we have a right side so what we want to do is we need to shape for the waist and we need to cut in our pencil right here so we need to shape this in on the side on both sides and then cuff it back out now some people may decide to leave this this way if you don't want it to have the pencil effect you can leave it this way and just shape the waist so again i'm going to take away the middle part and we're going to work on the sides so first i'm going to fold this in so what i'm going to do now is first i'm going to look for that my 20 inches my above the knee measurement whatever yours is so plus the allowance at the top is right here for me so now I'm going to look for my waist measurement and the waist is 39. We divided that by 12. That gives us 3.25. We had the same allowance. We came up with 4.25. So what I want to do here is I want to do 4.25. And then we're going to come down to the hip area. So I'm coming down by 8 and I'm going to have my seam allowance that I'm going to be using at the top. So what I want to do is I want to shape this to this. If you have a cuff ruler, you use it. If you don't have a cuff ruler, you can still use your uh, free hand and just connect it carefully. Now you're going to mark it, but watch carefully because when we start to cut it, we're going to be cutting it separately because remember, we are only cutting the side. We're not going to cut the middle where we're joining it to the center panel. So we need to spread this out when it's time to cut. So first I've done the waist, I've connected to the hip line. Then we're going to come in here by one inch. You can do one and a half inch, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do 1.25 right here, depending on how much you want it to cuff in. I'm going to link and join it to the hip line right here. If you have a cuff ruler, like a hip cuff, good. If you don't have it, you can use your free hand as well, or you can even use a straight ruler and you just make sure that you cuff it at the at the hip line and then from right here now we will now reconnect this all the way to the bottom we'll make a new slant and you join it to the edge your whatever width you wanted here that's where you want to join it to you want to connect it all the way down now when you want to cut you want to open it up like that Again, because you're connecting this part to the center panel. So this part does not need to be shaped. You only need to shape the side. So now you cut following your markings. So now we have three more to cut because we have four sides all together. And when you shape it, it is very important that you be very careful because you want to make sure that when you start to put this on the other ones to shape you want to make sure you're doing right side facing right side or you do the wrong side facing the wrong side you want to make sure you're cutting the side and not the center for example this now is the other side this is one side i have removed the center panel so this right here is one side this is the wrong side right here this is also the wrong side so this will be the other side that i need to shape so in that case, I'm just going to put this on top of it like that. So that when I spread it out, when I shape this side and I spread it out, 
I'll see that I've shaped the left and I've shaped the right. You don't want to end up shaping the right on both sides. I have the wrong side facing wrong side. So I can use this and trace that out and cut that side. And since this is done, you can take the next one and you can even cut this next one together. I know that I have the wrong side facing wrong side. I can just do this and do wrong side facing wrong side as well. Now when you're cutting these again, don't be in a hurry. Always check, analyze, make sure you're about to cut the correct side. And you can just do this and then you cut the side and not the side. Please check the description for the link to the next video showing you how to cut the sleeve and also how to put the different pieces together to form the old dress. I do hope this video has been very helpful to you. Please be sure to leave this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.